Hello and welcome to Steve's Backyard Bonsai. Today I'm going to be grinding up some moss <laughs> to make a moss experiment once again. I'm learning from my last two. I'm going to do it differently this time. I'll take you through the steps and then we'll speed right through it. I'm wearing a mask. This is nasty business. I'm taking the saw that I use to cut through roots. If I'm being that bold, I'm just brushing off the last bit of the dirt on the back of these really nice pieces of moss that I collected. Um, this is the Primo stuff. I have some other moss that I'll grind into here who, if I need it. And uh, we'll see what develops. All right, after I've knocked off as much as I want to, I mean, who cares about the rest? I'm putting it into a coffee grinder. This idea also stems from a video that was done by uh, Candace over at Bonsai Science. So I went out and found one for cheap. I think I paid nine bucks for this. I'm gonna grind this up, all of this. And through the magic of time-lapse, You won't have to suffer through it. Whoa, look at that dust. All right, I'm gonna chop that up even finer. I'm gonna mix it with 50% sphagnum moss. I'm gonna build a, a base out of uh, more moisture absorbent material. Um, and I'll, I'll go from there. Uh, that has been the problem, is keeping the top surface moist. Uh, and it tends to roll up. So I want to use a little more sphagnum moss fiber in there to keep it from rolling up and to keep it moss uh, moist. And that's what I'm doing today. So enjoy it and don't get dizzy. So next I'm going to get an, a like quantity of sphagnum moss chopped up and that'll be mixed with the other moss and that'll be for the top layer. <laughs> Had to take a little break there because of the dog barking, which he still is. All right, so I'm going to chop this up and I'll do it off camera and I'll come back to you when we get the next step set up. So I have equal volumes. And um, let me qualify that. This weighs, this is the moss, this weighs about three times what this weighs. This is the dried sphagnum moss. But by, by volume, they're about the same. This is a little less, which I think is good. This had the dirt that was behind the moss, uh, and that's contributing to the weight. But the moss is completely mixed in there. And now I want to mix both of these together in here. I think that's big enough. Maybe. Yeah, probably. And I'll do that off camera because I want to take it outside. This is nasty stuff. All right. Thanks. See you in a bit. Now each one of these containers has a 50-50 mixture, which looks like this. It's very lightweight and very fluffy. And this is going to be the top coat on a flat planting in a tray, which will have peat moss, worm castings, and a little bit of other sphagnum peat mixes that I have in small bags from, uh, uh, from earlier batches. And I'm gonna put them in a tray. I'm going to use this seed tray for the mixture. And I'll cut a a better screen for the top of that. This one would fit in the bottom, but I don't need it in the bottom. So I'll cut a larger one. Better luck this time. I had okay luck with it. I was able to use 
what I had made for my Central Park planting, and it doesn't look bad. There are a few areas that I'm a little worried about, but if I keep it moist, it should look good in spring. And I think starting it this way will, uh, will be an improvement as well. I'll come back when I have the mixture. All right, in this pile, I have worm castings and just a sprinkle on top of last year's moss mixture. I figured uh, <laughs> it, um, it's been in my freezer, didn't do any harm to anything, and I'm mixing it with peat moss in the same volume. The idea of this mixture is to have something that will retain moisture, still drain, what I do is probably water it from underneath so that it soaks and then drain the water from underneath. Once I have these two mixed together, I'm going to put them in that tray. I decided I will put that other screen on the bottom because this is pretty, well, it's pretty sandy really. So there are very fine particles that could make their way down through, but maybe I should put a... Uh, a layer of a layer of fines on the bottom yeah I might do that a layer of bonsai soil fines on the bottom and then this on that that'll work I'll come back at you shortly okay here are the bonsai soil fines on top of that I'll be placing this mixture which is peat moss Sphagnum peat moss and worm castings. A very fine mixture. And I'll flatten this out, pack it down a little bit, and then I'll cut a screen for the top. And since it's getting dark, the days are getting longer, but they're not long yet. I may have to continue this tomorrow, but that's all right. You'll see it in sequence. This won't be a very long video. And when I pack this down, it won't be much volume either. I'll water it from beneath, get it nice and wet before I do the actual planting because if the soil is wet, the, uh, the moss mixture will stick to it a lot nicer and I'll be able to get a more homogeneous pouring out of it. Let me get my trusty spatula and flatten this out. Some of you who watch my channel have seen me experiment this way. I've done it twice before. I think I mentioned that. The first time was more like this, but I don't think, I don't think I managed the substrate as well. Yeah, this will pack down more and it is, it is pretty even, I think. No matter, it's straight enough. Moss grows on all kinds of surfaces. All right, next step will be cutting a, a screen to fit right on top of this. But that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. So here is what I did after I turned off the camera last. I put the tray in here, just as you last saw it, and I filled this with water. I left it overnight and it all soaked in to here. So this is a nice, dense, water-holding substrate. Then this morning, I sprinkled ground cinnamon on top, just, you know, as a hopeful de deterrent to um, fungus gnats. You know, it's got a uh, very strong aroma. Who knows? It might work. If it works, you saw it here first. Now, on top of this, I've cut a screen, which will be the surface from which I extract the moss. I seem to have cut it perfectly. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's a little fat to lie flat. So I want it to lie flat. 
So I'll come back when I've got it sized properly. All right, I think I have a good fit now. I'm just pressing it down into the moist mixture. Yeah, it fits nice. And the idea is that I come along with something flat like this and scrape up the moss in strips, however I need it. And believe me, I'm gonna need moss like crazy every year. So if this works and the fungus gnats stay away, which will be great, then I've got something that maybe some of you might try and make it better. Make it even better. All right. So the ground cinnamon, the screen, and now I'm going to put peat moss on top of this and try to keep an even eighth of an inch. This is my planting surface. Maybe I'll put a little bit more <laughs> ground cinnamon on it. Why not? What's it going to hurt? And it smells great. And this is miracle Grow. Peat moss from the garden center. I'm sure available everywhere. This is going to be kept moist with a mister. And every few weeks, maybe I'll flood the bottom again. Let's start spreading it out. this bag it's like making brownies moss brownies now some some of you people who follow me I'm hoping you do it because you got the same sort of projects going on and maybe I figured something out that you can use. I would like to know if you figured out something that I can use. I will uh, give it a try, feature it on my channel. All right, that's not I probably should go more. I'm gonna miss the heck out of this. And then we're gonna sprinkle our, our actual moss mixture. And the last time I did this, I put a layer of Akadama fines, which I thought, oh, those will hold water. But they also dry out really quickly and did not make a good, a good substrate for, uh, for moss. Even though I had it growing, it was not thriving. So this, this is to correct what I view as a, um, uh, you know, an error I made in, uh, on the first go-round. So this has a screen under it, which will make it nice and easy to pass the spatula under to cut out pieces of moss that are growing. So let's make this somewhat interactive. Comments are great. I love my audience and I love their comments. But if you try something and it works, or if it looks good and you want to give it a try, let me know. And then follow up. Something I'm really interested to know. Okay, I'm going to mist this. This will be misted quite a bit more. How shall I apply my moss mixture, which is 50% approximately, 
50% sphagnum moss crushed up and 50% old moss, which included a bit of the material it was growing on because I'd have to destroy the moss to get it off. So I think I'm going to put it on with a spoon. And I think I'm going to change the perspective. Okay, moistened and ready to plant. I think this is the only way I'm going to be able to do it and, and be able to see the coverage. So we're going into uh, time lapse. That is it. This is what care looks like. Gentle misting. This first one's got to be pretty severe though because I've got that uh, I've got that layer of peat moss underneath there that needs to be wet. This is basically my 2025 moss. I hope it works. Also, because I'm a sucker sometimes for cool packaging, <laughs> I got myself some of these and I'll figure out how to plant these up the right way and see if they work. I've seen these advertised for so, for so many years and I love the packaging. <laughs> hope my moss develops and thank you for keeping me company in my backyard.